If your students have classroom jobs and you would like them to take more ownership of those jobs, you should pay them in classroom money. Not only are they gonna be stoked that they're making money that they can use to buy things in the classroom, this will also give them a very authentic experience when it comes to managing money. Class Equity is an app that makes the entire process of managing a classroom economy simple. <laughs> So the first thing you're gonna do when you make your class equity account is to create a class. You'll click on this plus sign by classes over here. Give your class a name. You can pick an icon here. I like this little world icon. And down below, if you already had some classes set up, you could apply the settings from those classes. But this is our first class, so we can't apply settings from any other classes yet. I'm gonna turn auto pay on because this is gonna save me a lot of time and effort and it's gonna send the paycheck into the student accounts automatically as well as take out the student business bills automatically. And as far as their salaries, they're gonna get paid once a month in my class. So I'm gonna do monthly, so they'll get paid on the first Friday. And the bills will also come out on the first Friday. So let's save that. First thing I wanna do is actually put my jobs into class equity. So I'm gonna to go to the top here and click on this tab that says jobs. And I recommend looking at these suggested jobs and see if there's anything there that you would like to use. You've got your job title. Uh, it shows the responsibilities of that job as well as the qualifications of that job and the salary and any of those options you can customize and change. So let's say I wanna do attendance monitor and the tech team and the supplies supervisor. And then I'm gonna scroll down and click on add selected jobs. But I've got a lot of jobs that I want to add that are not part of that list. And so I've got this Google Doc with 28 essential student jobs for the classroom of tomorrow. And stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you how you can actually get to this Google Doc. But these are jobs that are particularly useful for middle school and high school teachers. They will work with elementary school teachers, but I think middle school and high school teachers are usually the ones that are like, I don't know what kind of jobs that my students can have. And so you can see the job title, the description of that job, as well as qualifications, how often that job happens, uh, and if it can work in remote or in-person classrooms. So let's say I wanna add this tutorial creator job. I'm gonna go back over to class equity and click on add job. And job title is tutorial creator. And positions is how many students do you want to be able to have this job in your class? If you're like, oh, I only need one tutorial creator. Or if you're like, I'm willing to have up to three tutorial creators if students are interested in that job, you can adjust that. And the salary of this job, all the jobs in my classroom are between $1,000 and $1,600, depending on the amount of work and responsibility for the job. And so for the tutorial creator, I'm gonna make the salary 1,400 a month. For responsibilities, I'm gonna go back over to that Google Doc. Uh, this doc only has a general overview of what what this job does, but that responsibility section, I actually wanna put step by step what a student would need to do. Uh, so if they get that job, they know what to do. So I've got more in-depth descriptions on how to do these jobs uh, on a separate Google Doc just to keep this one a little cleaner. And so clicking on there will open up this new doc that has these bullet point checklists for each specific job. I am just going to copy this as the job responsibilities, and then I'm going to paste them in responsibilities. If you wanna customize anything here, maybe you wanna make coding tutorials bold, just highlight it and then you'll get a bunch of customization options, adding links, center align, all sorts of stuff like that. And then for qualifications, this is on the original document that it is someone who is comfortable creating screencast videos to carefully explain things without rushing. Copy that and then paste it there and I'm going to add this job. If you wanna edit any of the jobs that you have there, you can just click on this little pencil button. So maybe I want to say the attendance monitor uh, is 1200 a month instead of 120. I do recommend that you create as many job opportunities as possible because you're gonna be giving students an opportunity to, to rank the jobs in order of preference that they want. And that's gonna create so much more buy-in for your students. And the more jobs you have, the easier it is for them to find something that they would enjoy doing. But I'm gonna stop at four jobs right here and we are gonna continue setting up this class. So let's set up the bills that the students are going to have to pay in the classroom. You can click on set up up here and then click on the bills tab right here here and you can see the suggested bills right here. I am just going to be doing rent and I can click right there but let me show you how you can add a custom bill by clicking on add bill right here. The bill title is rent and in my class it is a thousand dollars so that way even the lowest paying jobs will be able to cover rent. And I'm going to click on save and you can add maybe a couple more bills if you'd like. These other two tabs are bonuses and fines. Let me click on bonuses. This is ways for students to earn additional money 
beyond their salary. You can see some of the suggested bonuses here. In my class, I taught pre-algebra, and so they could solve a ken-ken puzzle, which is pretty similar to Sudoku, and then the bigger the puzzle, the more that the, the actual bonus was worth. So you could put the bonus title and the value and then click save. I would stay away from things like being kind earns you a bonus because then you have students like, I'm kind, can I now get paid for being kind? And I never really wanted that kind of culture. I didn't want to create external incentives for things like general respect and kindness. And then the fines tab is for you to be able to set any fines for unwelcome behaviors in your classroom. Uh, in my class, I had a fine for off task behavior uh, that students had to pay $25 or so for and save that. I wouldn't make this list super long, but just think of the things that you really would not like to see in your classroom and then you can make them a fine. And you don't have to do fines either at all if that doesn't really match the culture of your class. And so classroom money is not that fun if you can't actually use it to buy anything. So let's set up our class store by clicking on store up here. The classroom store is something that you can just turn on or off with this toggle right here. So maybe Monday through Thursday, you keep it off, but then you turn it on Friday. So that way students can use Friday to, to use their classroom economy money. So if you jump over to the all items tab right here, this is where you can add the items to your store. You can see the suggested items here. You can customize these for your grade level. So lunch with the teacher probably works great for elementary school, maybe some middle school, probably not your high school teachers, but you could have a store item that is very expensive that says pizza party with three of your friends that the teacher pays for during lunchtime some day of the week. You'll need to price that out so you're not buying pizza every day of the week, but like only maybe once a semester someone is able to afford it. But I'm going to add the pencil and the teacher pie in the face. And then I'm going to submit that. I am going to change the price of the teacher pie in the face because $150 is too cheap for the amount of money my students are making. I'll click on edit item right here. And then I can change the value to maybe 1200 because I don't want a pie in the face every week. You can upload your own picture or use one of the avatars that are here and click save. By default, these items are in stock, uh, but maybe you run out of pencils. You can make it out of stock. So students cannot purchase it because you don't have any more of them by clicking on this little eye and then it will no longer appear in the class store. I actually had a job where a student would fundraise for items to put in the class store or in our case, we had a classroom auction and then they had a letter that they took to businesses to say, we're doing a classroom economy. Would you like to donate items to our class store? And surprisingly, a lot of companies were like, oh yeah, here's a gift card or here's this toy or here's this book. And then you could put those things in the store and, and then set the price appropriately so students would actually have to save up a little bit to get them. So that's another job option for your students. You could also grab a ton of things from the dollar bin at Target, throw it in here and students will buy it. And so now we are ready to start adding students here. So you can go over to the students tab right there and you can manually add students yourself by clicking on add student and then clicking on student info there. Put their first and last name and username and password. I do wish there was like a bulk add feature because this would take forever if you had a lot of students, but maybe not as long if you teach elementary school and you only have one class. If you teach students that are old enough to create their own accounts, you can click on add student and then use the class code option, which is what I suggest. And so Roger here is going to actually create a student account. Um, what are you excited to get? I'd like to get the pie in the face. <laughs> So the first thing he's gonna have to do is put the class code in. I recommend you project your class code up on the screen and have students do this in class so that way you can help them and support them in it. Then they're gonna put their first and last name, username and password. For simplicity's sake, I would have some kind of naming convention that your students follow. Like maybe your last name underscore their first name dot last name. You knowing the naming convention will be helpful for when students forget what their username is. And then as far as the password, I would just make sure that you have students write it down somewhere or share it with you. So that way you have it documented because I guarantee your students will forget these usernames and passwords. So just have a way for you and them to be able to access it somewhere when they do forget. I believe Class Equity is going to integrate a sign-in with your Google email. So if you're a Google school, 
I would go that route because it's gonna be way easier and no one's gonna have to remember passwords. All right, so Roger's gonna sign up here and this is what he is going to see when he logs in. The first time Roger does log in, he is going to apply for his job. And so he's gonna click on the pre-algebra class over here and it's gonna show all of the available jobs as well as how many open positions for those jobs there are. Roger the robot wants to be a part of the tech team. So he's gonna click on tech team, learn a little bit about the responsibilities and qualifications. And then if he wants to apply, he's gonna click on apply now. This is where he gets to rank his choice. If this is his first choice, second choice or third choice in job. And so this is gonna be his first choice. He's gonna share experiences and qualifications that make him the best candidate. And then he is going to say why he wants to have this job. And then if he has a resume, he can upload that. And so that can even be a whole separate lesson in your class, depending on what you teach. And then he's gonna submit his application. And then he's gonna do the same thing for his second choice and his third choice of job. If I go back to the teacher view and then click on pre-algebra down here, and then click on the jobs section at the top, I will now see that we do have a pending application from Roger on the tech team. And when I click on his name, I will see his application and his resume. And then on the top right, I can see if this is his first, second, or third choice. If I wanna give him this job, I'm gonna click on hire student. And now you can see he is listed under employees instead of pending application. But maybe you have a student that didn't submit an application for a job, but you would still like to assign them to a particular job. You can drag and drop them over to that job. And then it'll ask if you want to hire them and you'll say yes. And so and you can also see here that students can have multiple jobs if you would like in the classroom. I'm gonna take Roger off of this supplies job though, since he did not apply for that. And then back on the student view, what's nice is you can see on the right side here that we have the job the student was hired for as well as their responsibilities. So that is always accessible to them. So they always know exactly what is expected of them of their job. So from this view right here where I'm in pre-algebra and I have the students listed, I can actually make transactions and deposit or withdraw money from these student accounts in a variety of ways. So first I'm gonna change the view to this grid view. I think I like that a little bit better. And let's say I wanna add a bonus to Roger right here. I'm gonna click on the little check mark and I'm gonna say send bonus right there. And then I can pick which bonus I would like to add to his account and then click on submit. In the same way, if I want to give him a fine, I can click on his name. Right now he's the only student, but I can also select all my students by using this toggle right here. And again, it's only gonna select him because he's the only one, but I can send a fine as well and then say off task behavior and then submit it. Now you'll also see that I can send the paycheck and send the expenses, which is the bills that I have. I have that set on auto, so I don't have to do that. But one thing when you click on either of these is maybe there's another expense that I want to charge the student. Maybe they bought something in the auction or something like that. Under other, I can say auction item. And then I can say the, the value of the auction item that they paid. Um, and since this is under expenses, it will be a withdraw from their account. And then I can click on submit. Now, if I jump over to the dashboard of the student view, you can actually see all of these pending transactions. The way class equity works is they actually have to do the math to do the withdrawals and the deposits. And so in this case, rent came out automatically. And so they didn't have any money. So that puts them in debt, $1,000, negative 1,000. But Rod did get his salary for being on the tech team. So he's going to click on deposit. And since his current balance is negative a thousand, but he's depositing a thousand, you have to say what the new balance is, which is zero. I don't love this feature. And I taught math. <laughs> I just kind of want the students to be able to just see all their transactions. But I believe they may in the future give teachers the option to turn this off. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these transactions. So after several transactions, Roger has a balance of $375. He can now buy something from the class store. So he's gonna jump over to pre-algebra and he's gonna click on store up here and he is going to add a pencil to his cart. And since he has $375, $10 is gonna be taken out. His new balance is 365 and he's gonna pay for his pencil. Jumping back to the teacher view, if I go over to my dashboard, you will see that I've got a new to-do item that Roger wants to buy a pencil and then I will have to either approve or deny that purchase. And in this case, I'm gonna 
accept, approve that transaction. And maybe I wanna see all of Roger's transactions. The easiest way to do that is just to search for Roger up here and then click on his name. And then this is gonna give me his account details, but then I can click on transactions right here and I can see all of the different transactions that he has had. I can delete any of them if need be. Maybe I just would say like, oh wait, that was an accident. Let me delete that. And it modifies and adjusts the remaining balances accordingly. So if we go back to the dashboard, a few of the other things here. So in addition to the student search and the to-do list, you've got this quick action feature. So if you ever just wanna send one transaction to a student, you just find that student and the class that they're in and then give them the bonus or the fine or whatever it is that you want to give them. And on the left side here, you've got this class overview that you can either filter by all your classes or individual classes. And then you can also sort students by either the most bonuses or the fewest bonuses. And that way, if you have students that are flying under the radar and they're just not really getting much bonus money, you can kind of track that a little bit easier. Regarding pricing, everything that I've shown you is on their essential free plan. And then the pro teacher plan gives you a few more options, including having a co-teacher in your classes. And then they even have a custom school plan if you want your entire school to be implementing this class equity system and connect students to multiple teachers and things of that nature. So click here if you'd like that Google Doc email to you that has the entire list of class jobs. It'll also have a link to the document with the instructions that I gave my students on how to do their jobs. It's a Google Doc that you can customize so that way you can have everything ready to go before you start making your class equity account.